What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Detroit Become Human. We left off in Connor's story, so let's go right ahead and just get started. November 6th, 2038. Oh, we're back here again. Wait, I literally just thought Connor was holding a sword. I'm like, where did you get this sword at, Connor? Because look, it looks like a sword, does it not, from here, this angle? Let's go around and see if we can... See, last time we were here, I thought we missed something over here. But there was that rock thing over there. Is Amanda out in the middle? No. Let's go to this rock thing. See if it does anything again. Did it not give us an instability last time? Wait, this place, right? Is this really real? This place here? I think we... Didn't we read that Amanda... This is, isn't exactly a real place. I can't remember what Amanda's is. Oh, there she is over there. Wait, because there looked like there was a way... That's where we started. It kind of looked like there was a path. It's over this bridge, but it's probably going to trigger Amanda if we get too close. Hold on, Amanda. Don't trigger. Because there was something over here. We missed something in here. We didn't get 100% last time we came here, right? Oh, we can't even go over here. I thought it would have been a path that we could go to. Okay. What I'm saying is that, like, when we read Amanda's codex thingy, her head right up, it said something about she contacts Connor through something, like an interface or something. Is this exactly real, maybe? Because if it, if it isn't real, then they're really, really putting rain in here like it's real. Anyways. Hello, Amanda. Connor, I've been expecting you. Would you mind a little walk? Trusted? That deviant seemed to be an intriguing case. A pity you didn't manage to capture it. Explain? I mean, we can explain, but what deviant? So, yeah, definitely explain. Deviants are completely irrational, which makes it difficult to anticipate their behavior. But I should have been more effective. Did you manage to learn anything? Diary? I found its diary, but it was encrypted. It may take weeks to decipher. What else? Signs on the walls. Oh, this is the birds. I thought it was Kara's. The walls of the apartment were covered with drawings of labyrinths and other symbols. Like the other deviants, it seemed obsessed with RA9. You came very close to capturing that deviant. How is your relationship with Lieutenant developing? Saving Hank? There's no way we were not going to save Hank there. He seemed grateful that I saved his life on the roof. He didn't say anything, but he expressed it in his own way. We don't have much time. Deviancy continues to spread. It's only a matter of time before the media finds out about it. We need to stop this. Whatever it takes. I will solve this investigation, Amanda. I won't disappoint you. A new case just came in. Find Anderson and investigate it. How'd she know that? Is she some kind of android too? What if she's like, THE android? Makes sense? At first I thought she was talking about Kara. I mean, she wasn't really being... 
straight about, straight forward about what deviant we were going after. You have reached your destination. Thank you for traveling with Detroit Taxi. We gotta find old Hanky. Step out, look at it. Okay, come on. That thing is slick. Hank, we're a friend of Hank's. Look for Lieutenant Anderson. Oh, we're at Hank's house. There's some windows. Can we knock his trash cans over? He'll be pissed when he comes out, too. Let's look at his car. We gotta find old Hanky. Remember when sex was safe and driving was risky. <laughs> what? Hank? I don't think either of them was safe in... Yeah. Can't see through that. Knock. Lieutenant Anderson! Anybody home? Find a way inside. <laughs> ring ring motherfucker Connor just and held it down for like 20 minutes hey there's the dog that's a big ass dog sumo we gotta find a way inside Hank. I guess try the back door we can try the garage over there actually let's try this way first since we already committed to this side and then we'll try the garage. Oh, there's a window. Hold on. Hank's got a computer over there. And Sumo. Oh, shit. Hank is unconscious? Lieutenant Dude. Anderson! We need to get the hell in there. Well, that works. Easy, Sumo. I'm your friend. <laughs> See? I know your name. I'm here to save your owner. Oh, shit. Easy, Sumo. Damn, Hank. Check on Hank. Is that a bottle? He's got a bottle next to him. Wait, that's a gun, too. Hank. There's no blood anywhere, so that's a good sign at least. Why do you got this gun next to you, Hank? Hold on. Examine. Search for clues. Well, there's the bottle. Scotch whiskey, 40% alcohol content. Three fifty-seven Magnum, one bullet remaining. It makes me feel like okay, he has one bullet in there. Was he playing what's that game? Roulette? With the bullets? When he was drunk? Oh no. Slight uh that word. No sign of trauma. Scotch whiskey, traces of alcohol, forty percent. Content. Lieutenant. Suspected a coma? Wait, what? <laughs> Wake up, Lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Connor. <laughs> it's mad the shit out of him. <laughs> I'm going to sober you up for your own hey, sake. Hey! I have to warn you. Leave me alone, this may be fucking android. Get the fuck out of my house. I'm sorry, Lieutenant, but I need you. <laughs> Thank you in advance for your cooperation. We get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, take Hank to the vet. Hey, Shut Hank, what? Attack. <laughs> Good job. Fuck your bathroom, man, Hank. Attack. Good dog. <laughs> Fuck, I think I'm gonna be sick. Connor <laughs> just propped him on the wall. 
Ah, oh, leave me alone, you asshole. I'm not going anywhere. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> I'm not what grumpy. I'm still. Oh, no. I don't want a bath. Thank you. Sorry, Lieutenant. It's for your own good. <laughs> wakey, wakey, Hank. What the fuck are you doing here? A homicide was reported 43 minutes ago. I couldn't find you at Jimmy's bar, so I came to see if you were at home. <sighs> Jesus, I must be the only cop in the world that gets assaulted in his own house by his own fucking android. <sighs> Can't you just leave me alone? Solution? Solution? You seem to have personal issues. You should consult a professional who can help you. Beat it, you hear me? Get the hell out of here! <laughs> I love this shit. Tease? Leave? Let's tease him. Come on. I understand. It probably wasn't interesting anyway. A man found dead in a sex club downtown. Guess they'll have to solve the case without us. You know, probably wouldn't do me any harm to get some air. <laughs> There's some clothes in the bedroom there. Bring... I'll go get them. Hank, clean clothes. Hey Hank, we gotta bring you clean clothes. I wanna read these things over here. I'm not grumpy, I just don't like you. Shave in or not. Today will... be fabulous. Keep smiling. He said clothes in his room. This your room, Hank? Oh yeah, right there. Bring Hank some clothes. What do you want to wear? Whatever. Stripey, streaky, hippie. <laughs> Let's fucking turn him into a hippie. <laughs> there you go, Hank. Hippie time. One deck for you. He said, "I don't care." Stripey? Streaky? Or hippie? Why not? Oh, Hank. <coughs> Are you alright, Lieutenant? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Wonderful. Just, uh, give me five minutes, okay? Sure. Five minutes. <laughs> Learn more about Hank. Are we timed now? Say, give him five minutes. Let's go learn about Hank in his room. Oh, a book. I don't think we should read this book right now. He said, give him five minutes. Let's just, let's not read. Time to pull the plug. Remember that. Time to pull the plug. And then the other one is Tainted Love. Ooh. We'll read at the end. It's... I don't know if it's time, but he said five minutes. Is there anything else in here? No. We can't go to that. Oh, there's something right there. Thanks, watching basketball. Michigan Brothers Detroit Soul Records. Autumn Blues. Hank loves jazz. I kind of want to go look at this gun. Yeah, let's look at the gun. Q. Examine. Question. Say nothing. Uh, let's not say anything, maybe. Hank has suicidal tendencies. We brought that up before. Oh, there's something over there, too. Oh, what was this? There's this badge. Oh, cheeseburger. Look. Analyze. Deceased. Cole Anderson. He did. 
Hank lost his son. He died not too long ago. Ah, oh, shit. All right, well, let's go to something in it. Never mind. Damn it. We missed the thing hey, on the other side. Dog, Sumo. I won't be long. Damn, Hank, you clean up well, sir! Maybe it was the computer on the other side that we... Oh, is that it? Damn it! Russian... Oh, it's called Russian Roulette. Left for the Eden Club, Hank is ready. Tainted Love, we read Tainted Love and pull the plug. Found the picture of Hank's son. Yeah, but... We found many things. Shouldn't we have more here? Because we found the picture of Hank's son, yeah. But, well, let's look at the beginning. Let's look at the start. Emerge in a Zen garden. Join Amanda. Arrive at Hank's place. We rang the bell, we rung again. Check the car, check bedroom window, check front living room, check back living room, knock on door, spot Hank, and break in. We enter the house. Look, not many people check the living room door. Or the living room window. Hank's dog attacks. Calm Hank's dog. Well, there we go. Analyze Hank. Take Hank to the bathroom. Distant attitude? We were distant? Take hippie shirt. Found picture of Hank's son. 94% of people found that. Red pull the plug. Red tainted love. But, okay, look. If this is... There was... When we came out, there was the book. And we went straight. We found the record. Then the record should be right here or something. One of these. And then we turned left. We found the gun. The gun should be here. We found the picture. And then the other side, what was over there when we looked at the one window, it was a computer, right? So that may have been something else. So it's not showing that we we did them things. Hank is ready. And left for Eden Club. It was so funny when Connor was like, well, maybe someone else will pretty much take the uh, case. Why would we want to go anyway? Because it's like a strip club. We're going to a strip club next. Oh, that was so funny. Hank was like, yep, I'm good to go. Here we are. <laughs> Look, more people wanted Hank in the hippie outfit. It's just funny to have him in a hippie outfit. All right, Hank. Go on, man. November 6, 2038. Marcus or Kara? Artemis. Oh, it's Marcus. Sorry. This is crazy. If they catch us, we're dead. What do we do now? We need to find the Cyberlife warehouse. That's where they keep the spare parts and the blue blood. Follow me. Okay, we're following north. Jericho is neutral with Marcus. Oh, this is going to be interesting because it's totally different from what we've been doing. Marcus, you better run. Run, run. Don't let them see us. Don't let them see us. Okay, I'll do my best. Zone A3. Watch out. Now what do we do? I'll find another way. Oh, they're talking through. Oh, that's cool. All right, let's climb. We're breaking and entering. Hey, we need them spare parts. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus was like in his body. We 
be nervous because I'm really actually nervous here. Marcus, climb up here. Climb up? Okay. Well, I guess we're following north. I gotta be honest, when it comes to stealthy in games, I'm not the best. I'll try my best though. The warehouse is up ahead. We're almost there. Ooh. This is pretty sick. Like we're a crew under the cover of darkness. Cyber Life Warehouses. We have everything we're looking for. First, we have to get rid of that drone. Well, leave it to me. Leave it to me, then. Pre-construct. Okay. D. Oh, just jump to it. Would be spotted. That's not the way to go then. Would be too high. Then maybe to the side? Yeah, right here. There it is. And then... So you don't want to jump right to the droid. Jump on the top of it, maybe? It'll be too high to reach. Okay, well, if it's too high to reach, can you jump to... Wait. This... this over here. Well, I know it would be too high to reach, but... Can you get to the bottom of it, maybe? Or the side? I get it. But let me... Is there another way? Maybe this isn't the way, then. Has to be. There's nowhere else to go. Oh. This has to be, then. There we go. So we're jumping on top. And then over on top of it. Easy fucking peasy. You know there's gonna be a quick time event. You guys ready? Easy peasy. You okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Good job, Marcus. Thank you, Nord. Quick, open the other crates and fill your bags. Take as much as you can. Follow North. Gather spare parts. Search crate. Crates. Let me get some spare parts too. Look at all that blue blood. I You were trespassing on private property. Your presence constitutes a level two infraction. Oh shit. I will notify security. John! God damn machine! Where is it this time? W D Grab Hide. John! I need your help. John! Okay. 
hold. Kill or release. Definitely the hold. Where's the drone now this? Just my luck. Yeah, but he's gonna commute it though. Just to let him go? <laughs> but Hey Let's you Let's finish up and get out of here. You good? Try to find some blue blood. We still don't have enough. Let him go. You just let him go. <laughs> Alright, well we'll take more blue blood. Sure. Would that guy be commuting to security then? Check the bigger crate. Oh, right here. Big one. Definitely parts in that one. The quick time events. I was thinking about going at the guard and then fighting, but hold seemed to be... Well, I kind of didn't want to kill anybody, though. Yeah, but free them, close again. Let's free them. But well, Marcus, you were you like that one. Us. Yeah. What's he? I don't even know what he's doing. And that's all we can carry. Let's go. Drop. What the hell's going? Take on? me with you. Wait. <laughs> huh? He's on their side. We can't trust him. He took a risk for us. We can't just leave him here. We can't bring him back with us. It's too dangerous. I think we should. Accept, refuse. I. Hell, if he wants to go, come on. They come with us. North did not like that. <laughs> I know where you can find more spare parts. What do you mean? The trucks. They're full of bio components. They run on autopilot, but they can be driven manually with a key. Where is this key? Down there in the control station. There are two human guards. We'll have to get the key without being noticed. This There's is suicide markers. Our bags are full. We got what we came for. Let's go before they catch us. This is a truck full of spare parts. There'd be enough for all of us. We can't pass this up. And if we get killed, our people will have nothing. We can't take that chance. It's too risky. Get the key, leave. I think we should do it. Let's, let's try. Wait here. If I'm not back in 10 minutes, go without me. Marcus. I'm coming with you. No, I'm going alone. It's not worth it for both of us to risk losing our lives. I'm not good at sneaking, but I'll try my best. Steal an electric key, find the key. Androids found- well this guy- what is going on, Marcus? Do you have something going on with your hand now? Are you able to take droids and break them into deviancy with your hand? We got windows, we got things here. Let's uh, start right from the right then, I guess. Oh shit, there's dogs. Shift, look. Let we know. Is that the key? Oh, that is the key. I can't imagine going in this door is the right idea. Not the greatest that's- oh, that's a dog cage. Fuck. We ain't touching that. There's windows. Let's go through a window. There's windows, barrels, and a dog cage out there. 
But what could that do? God we can damn dogs. At least the dogs, what the maybe. They... What the fuck are they barking at? There's a toilet. Barking at. Could be the weather. They don't like storms. Threaten the yeah. guards. I was gonna take my kids camping this week. Again. Well, we have stuff so over here. For that. Is Mike still in? There's the window. Maybe we should open the other it. window. Cause a blackout. Looks like it. And he should be done already. Better off in here than out patrolling. Lower the that. guards outside. Cause a blackout or lower the guards. Fuck. A blackout might cause a stir, and how are we gonna get out of here in a blackout? We have to get the key, though. Will we not be? We're we gonna go back outside and lure him with, though. Shit. There's the barrels again, and then there's the dogs. We call us a blackout. Maybe we should call us a blackout. But what I'm thinking is, if we call us a blackout, we're gonna be able to get the key then. The guards will be on way much more alert. Like I don't want them on high, high alert. I want us. I don't know. Use the barrels? Let's use the barrels. See what this does. Yes. Attract the guards. Fuck. What was that? The drums fell down. Was it me? Alright. Come on. Let's go get the key. Steal. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, this is fucking intense, because you know they're, like, right there. Come on, come on. You guys still outside, though? Return to the group. Oh, just in time. I think we should close the window. Fuck okay, it, let's go. We got the key, that's what we came for. Well, we came for the blood and parts, but hey, we got a key. Did you get it? That was so cool. Nice. <laughs> I should've- I was thinking about the blackout. Oh, I almost did the blackout. I'm actually happy because I was like, what are we going to distract them with the dogs? I know I seen the barrels out there, but like, I wasn't- I guess I wasn't expecting them to kick the barrel over and that'd be a distraction. I'm happy we didn't go with the blackout. Hurry, Ugh. get in. Insert key, please. We're gonna drive? Oh, we're gonna fucking drive! Drive out of the docks, let's do it! Quick time events, I'm gonna be running into shit, I know it. it. Just has us holding it. Oh, look, we actually had to drive out, drive out though. Through gates and stuff. The blackout, we probably wouldn't have been able to drive out here. Because it's all, it's kind of like automated, in a sense. Well, wasn't what I intended to do, but it was actually the right thing to do, I think. Ooh. Oh yeah. That's awesome. We gotta we gotta understand what Marcus's thing's doing, his hand. A truckload! We stole a whole truckload! We got bio components for everybody! We couldn't have done it without Marcus. What I do? What he does? Everyone's I can't loving get Jericho us because here androids are free, free to live in the dark, hoping that no one finds us, free to die in silence, waiting for a change that's never gonna come. But I don't want that freedom. And I'm not going to beg for the right to smile, or love, or stand tall. I don't know about you, but there's something inside me that knows that I am more than what they say. I am alive, and they're not going to take that from me anymore. Our days of slavery are over. What humans don't want to hear, we will tell them. What they don't want to give, we take. We are people. We are alive. We are free. Yeah! 
what a turn of events for Marcus's story, huh? He's the leader of a resistance in a way. 57 complete. That's something. Marcus stole a truck full of parts. I gotta tell you though, I said it when we were running over there. When it comes to sneaking in games, I just really ain't the best. Sometimes I get it right. Sometimes I don't. Most of the time, I usually fuck up and I get seen. I'm actually happy we didn't do the blackout. I wasn't fully thinking about it at the time of, okay, I knew we had a vehicle, but I didn't think a blackout would have stirred it. Probably not have been able to actually drive out. Cause I didn't, okay, I was thinking about stealing it, but I wasn't thinking there was like a gate that we had to get out for some reason. And now that we got into the vehicle and then rolled out, I'm so happy we did not cause a blackout because we probably wouldn't have been able to get out. Whoa, man. All right, well, let's see what we got going on here. Marcus, the leader of a resistance. I just did not see this happening. If you think about it, I don't think... Jeez, there's so much in this. The RA9 thing, it makes me feel like they were... They revere this RA9, right? And Marcus's story probably didn't take place before all the stuff that we've seen. Because when he was doing a speech, I was like, is, is Marcus RA9? Like, maybe it could be this RA9 thing. So Marcus, whatever changed him, he just, he's, he's a resistance leader now. I guess that's what we can call this, a resistance, maybe? He's got to be the leader. Look, Jericho is admired. We're friends of everything. We are neutral with Josh, but we're friends with everything but Josh. Interesting. Hunting for the parts. Climb on the dock. Follow north. Almost spotted. Climb on containers. Progress towards cyber life. Follow north. 88% of people follow north. It did say follow north, but it was actually quick, so we could have picked something else. Instead of following north, we probably could have... Let's see, because... North was straight, and we jumped on the thing with North, maybe to the right or left. I'm thinking they went to the right, though. And 88% of people follow North? Yeah. Sure. Drone blocks path. Neutralize drone. Marcus was unharmed. 90% of people was unharmed there. It was kind of an easy one, if you think about it. It was just W on BC, so it's just... We always hold the W. It was just easy. Reach cyber life. Gather the spare parts. Security Android appears. I, this was just, this decision here, it was honestly just spur of the moment completely that quick. And it seems like it was the right thing because I didn't even get a chance. I seen, we started kind of, I don't think we seen the guard, but there was also things to the left that I didn't look at. I went right first. I usually go left in games first. I'm happy we're going this right gig right now. Let's just go with the flow. But when it all happened, it was just so quick. Looked at the guard first, and I kind of just barely read it. I didn't even see what the other one said. It said grab and hide, so I just grabbed them and hid. I would have liked to see what the other ones were, but I don't know if it was enough time to actually see it all. I didn't see it fully. John becomes deviant. So that guy's name is John. 92% of people actually did it. So this is what happened then. Marcus, when he pulled this John guy in, he had his hand over him, and his hand did that thing, and when he had his hand over him, I guess that's when he broke him from his shackles. It's like Marcus is breaking. He's the breaker of chains, the breaker of shackles. <laughs> He's fucking breaking all of this and making them all deviants. Whoa, man. Marcus goes, why aren't you like us? But Marcus... At one point, sir, you were kind of like them, too. You just had so much shit, and you broke free. Grab. Guard searches for security android. We held our position. That was the right thing to do. It was hold our position. Maybe set him free. Or the other one was kill. I didn't want to kill him. Setting him free would have been interesting, because if you think about it, when Marcus was holding them, he had his hand already over him, so maybe he changed immediately, pretty much. And he actually would have helped us, maybe. But I think it was just safer just to hold. Human guard leaves. 66. Resume search, 95. 
find Creative Androids 95, free the Androids. Everybody wanted to free the Androids. So, hey, some people did leave the Androids. Interesting. John wants to join. We accepted John, 80%. John mentions key. We accepted the... Try to find the key. Hey, everyone's adventurous. We all want to find it. We want to see more. That's what it is. Instead of refusing, we want to see more. Control room. Enter room. Found the key. Lord of the guards. 14% of people actually lord the guards. Wow. Most people probably did blackout then. It seemed like it was the right thing to do at the time. And... Well... I don't know. Something was just telling me to look outside. I know we had the dogs out there, but I don't think the barrels was interactable at first. We seen them. You could have lured the guards probably with the blackout, though. Yeah. Holy hell, man. We avoided the guards altogether. Look, 42% of people did this then. You, was st you still could have... Okay. This is just a rare of just going back out the window and maybe pushing the barrel over, I guess. You could have probably still did the blackout and avoided the guards too. Completely. And it would have been fine. Because if we caused the blackout, right, they probably would have got it back up and running before we drove the car out. So it was like, pick your poison, basically. It don't even matter which. Both of them probably lead to the same destination of avoiding the guards if you actually avoid the guards. You just have to do it quickly. We caused the blackout. Probably jump out that window there and then jump back into the other window when they go into. See, because I'm thinking we cause the blackout, we jump out the window, go to the other window. When they're over there looking in the machine with their flashlights, probably we're going over to the key, grab the key, and we go back and we avoided the guards in a way. We stole the key. That's probably what, what it was. And the other one was, well, it cuts off here. <laughs> Good luck. We leave with a truck, and Marcus sold a truck full of parts, 64%. Whoa! Hell yeah! The sexiest androids. We can't do another one, friends. Wait, is this going back to Connor and Hank? I can't say I'm not interested to see what the next one's gonna be. Let's go to the main menu. We got some reading to do. We have some reading to do. And I don't want to start the other one Accessing just yet. Accessing the extras section. Look at magazines because it was, um, it was definitely this one. Let's just look. Connecting the dots was not it. Change magazine. North Pole. The Bee Disaster. Tainted Love was definitely one. We'll read Tainted Love first. And the other one was... If I see it, I'll remember. Sales of Android's intimate partners are exploding. Tainted Love. Police to use marketing data to identify criminal early. Politics in focus are American senators really corrupt. Uh... Yeah? Sure. Sales of Android's intimate partners are exploding. Androids capable of satisfying customers' sexual and emotional needs have been a phenomenal success. I wonder why. You can just have it whenever you want it. There's just no... They don't have stamina. And they probably wouldn't object ever, really. Just imagine the Android. Excuse me, it's time for your daily banging. <laughs> Hands off, please. Though the idea seemed far-fetched initially, CyberLife's gamble has paid off. These androids offer nothing less than a full partner experience for men or women. These advantages are many. Androids take care of their house, cook to a high standard, and fulfill any sexual fantasy without ever saying, Not tonight, honey. I have a headache. <laughs> While CyberLife initially focused on urban singles to buy its models, this year's record divorce rate seems to show that many men and women prefer to live with an android than a human partner. This won't help the already plummeting birth rate, which raises serious questions about the role androids play in our society. Well, they can't have kids, it just ain't gonna happen. 
I guess, uh, let's just say it, maybe, well, you can just obviously clean yourself, but do androids have, um, inner cleansing things? Does all the androids come with the parts, though? It makes you wonder. They all probably do, I'm sure. But the uh, love androids, they come with, for sure, for sure, the, hey. For sure, for sure, parts? And you got, oh, it's, look, it's, it's North here. We've read about North at the police station. Remember? When we were reading all the cases at the police station, there was something with a sex droid. I actually went back to the episode and, because it was brought up that we did actually read about North then, went back to the episode and when we were reading about North in that little write-up on Hank's computer, when we went to the station, the one time and the one deviant member, he smashed his head on the thing in his cage and killed himself. When we actually sat at the desk and look at all of the stuff, there was a write-up about North. She's a... Well, she's a sex droid, I think. And she left the Eden Club, maybe? So she was probably... That's probably what's going to happen next. Because she's not exactly there anymore. So what, what else? Time to pull the plug. This is the other one here. College Ball. Should varsity athletes accept sponsorship? Do touchdown replay technology 100% active? Whoa. That's a huge thing. A recent study led by Dr. P. Gorgansky has linked the amount of time we spend in front of screens with the widespread antidepressant epidemic. From the time we wake up to the time we go to bed, we are surrounded by screens-based devices. Of course, too much TV definitely won't make your eyes go square, but it can have other harmful consequences. Yeah, I mean, remember when we were kids and we were sitting so close to the TV and your mother's like, Hey, you don't want to sit close to the TV. You'll go blind or whatever she'll say, whatever she said, I can't remember. Remember, just our parents used to always yell at us for sitting because I used to sit right on the TV where I can like, literally fog up the TV by breathing into it and looking and watching Knight Rider or something way back in the day. These include poor sleep, strained eyesight, and lack of face-to-face -face interaction, driving emotional underdevelopment, and depression. Next, please. Jorgensky's study found that two in three people take antidepressants, and lack of social interaction is the leading cause. Meanwhile, the average person spends 82% of their time communicating through a device, rather than in person, and relationships are suffering for it. I mean, relationships are suffering for it, but then you're going to the androids now anyway. It would happen in real life. You know it would happen. Probably 90% of guys would be doing this. You know it. In response, CyberLife has introduced a home psychologist add-on for your Android. In a bid to teach us how to communicate again, the upgrade costs $150, but can benefit the whole family with group therapy sessions and activities adapted for children and adults. But Gurgansky is skeptical, our society is hooked on technology. I don't think yet more technology is the answer. Just go outside and fucking talk to someone. Sure. Definitely. Go to the tab list. That was the books. And then gallery, yeah? We got some more heads here, Hanky. We got, oh, we got 1,400. We might be able to read about the monsters this time. Hey, Hank. How are you? I'm actually quite worried about Hank, friends. He's got suicidal tendencies. Hey, we, we suspected something of the such. I didn't want to bring it up at the time because I just didn't want to say it. That's a hard thing to kind of talk about. Because, I mean, there you never know what someone's going through. Now we know, it, well, his son died. And that's probably why. And I wonder if an android actually killed his son. Oh, man, could you imagine if an android actually killed his son and now that's the reason why Hank... You could understand his skepticism, and it probably hurts him, but he's still doing it. You gotta respect that. Hank was never the snappiest dresser on the force. In the comfort of his own home, he prefers to let it all hang out. <laughs> there you go, Hank. Hank underwear. <laughs> Is that underwear, though? Because it don't really look like underwear, Hank. Let me click back on you. Oh, I guess it's kind of underwear. I was expecting Hank to be a, like a tidy whities type of guy. Anything else? 
North, definitely. Let's read about North. We gotta get to the monsters, though, before we forget. North Jericho. North looks so freaking real, man. Just look at her. She's... Well... She's definitely a sex android. North is a WR400 model marketed by CyberLife under the name Tracy. This is a model reserved exclusively for authorized clubs selling the charm and company of androids, including the famous chain Eden Club. Listen, just because she's pretty doesn't mean she's a sex droid. I'm saying her picture was in that magazine, her face, so this is probably the sex machine model. I'm sure we're, we have to... We have to see one eventually. North is ready to make any sacrifice in the name of the android cause. Fueled by a profound hatred towards humans for personal reasons related to her past. She dreams only of her people's freedom, whatever the price. Could you imagine if she really... If this model really is the sex model and she is having to deal with that shit and see the humans and she actually doesn't like humans? Hates humans? Would be rough. Couldn't even imagine. Just look, friends, look at the facial animations on the characters in this game. Unfucking believable. We got Sumo! We gotta go read the monsters, man. Who's this fucking guy? Oh, it's a cyber life guard, probably. Alright, let's read the monsters. You know you want to. We can't just leave them. Oh my creepy Zotko's creatures! During his experiments, Zlatko has modified dozens of androids to create monstrous but functional creatures. As many of them are deviant, they are horribly aware of their terrible fate. My word, this poor... This poor android, look at him. Friends, look at his spikes he's got on his back. What the actual fuck? Condemned to wander in the penumbra of a creator's madness, they see Kara and Alice as their last breath of hope. I'm happy you all helped us in the end. But you are creepy as fuck. That's not your fault. Zlatko's creatures. During his experiments, Zlatko has modified dozens of androids to create monstrous but functional creatures. As many of them are deviant, they are horribly aware of their terrible fate. Condemned to wander in the Phenumbra. Of their creator's madness, they see Kara and Alice as their last breath of hope. I literally just read all that. It's the same one for this one. So we probably could have went... We probably could have saved points by not doing that one. It's literally the same one. But just a different model that you can kind of look at. This is what androids look like. It, to be honest with you, it looks like sick armor. If you actually had this armor. But that's kind of... What they look like. Underneath the skin. Oh man. Remember the bird? Well, we got this guy. Let's go back and read. We got Simon and. I can't remember the other guy's name. I want to say John, but it's not John. We'll read the the one that I can't remember name yet. It's it's a few characters. Josh, there it is, Josh. I knew it was something with a J. PJ five hundred. Josh is a PJ500 model, a series designed by CyberLife to serve as university lectures. Oh, interesting. The first models supplied in 2031 were specialized in teaching languages and history. Before, new models also qualified in mathematics and physical sciences. After being violently attacked by drunken students, Josh narrowly managed to escape to Jericho. Calm and composed, Josh is convinced of the possibility of a peaceful solution with the humans. Wow, that's a tough job. You failed somebody, and they're going to come back and beat the hell out of the professor, which is an android. That's terrible, man. Hey, he still has hope. Josh still has hope. Look, peaceful solution with the humans. I agree. I want a peaceful solution. I don't want Jericho rising up, getting all these androids on our side, and starting this big android armada, and we go and try to destroy humans. I don't want to. I want to coexist somehow. That's that's the ultimate goal for the future, I think, at this point. Try to coexist, push through together. Yeah. How you doing, Josh? 
Simon? Simon is a PL600 model. He's got universe, Detroit University shirt too. Well, not two. I don't think Josh has one, but Simon has one. Simon is a PL600 model, just like Daniel, designed to be a family domestic assistant. Nobody really knows what led Simon to Jericho, and he himself has never explained it. He is one of the oldest members of the group when Marcus arrives in Jericho, and as such, his opinions is respected and listened to by everyone. Interesting how I said just like Daniel. You think this is Daniel? Makes you wonder if he somehow got fixed. Changed his name to Simon. Because Norse's name was Tracy and... Was it Tracy? Is that what it said? And then she changed it to North. She was probably heading North. Fuck it. There you go, Simon. What else can we read? I think we just got Sumo left. Maybe. Sumo! We got points to spare. Look at him, Sumo. 29 inches, 170 pound dog. Holy! Sumo is a Saint Bernard belonging to Lieutenant Anderson. An adult male, he weighs 170 pounds and is 29 inches at the shoulder. Despite his fearsome size, Sumo is a gentle giant. They say dogs resemble their owners, and Sumo is no different. Gruff, big, powerful, and intimidating. Sumo's fearsome... Look, he just stopped. <laughs> he just stopped. I can still hear him breathing, but he went into... having stare-down mode. Sumo's fearsome exterior masks a sweet, loyal, and noble nature. Sumo. You having a stare-off contest? Friends, have a stare-off contest with him and see who wins. Who blinks first? Oh, I blinked. You win. Damn, Sumo, you are a beast! Oh, we, we got this guy, too. And that's it. One of the guards, maybe? We conveniently just had enough points. Cyberlife Security Warehouse. Various, various. Cyberlife Waterside Warehouse might not be the most secure location in the world, but millions of dollars worth of parts pass through the facility every week. Private security is a must. Cyberlife leased this pre-existing but disused warehouse in 2022. After the company rapidly expanded its distribution chain, company security has patrolled the area ever since. Such a big company now. It's going to expand, you know it is. It's going to expand and get worldwide at some point. You can't just, hey, other states and countries, they're not just going to let this go at Detroit. There's so much money to be made from it. And not just that, there's so much just things that androids can do. I wonder if this is going to be our future in some way, some fashion. I wonder if this is already a thing that they've made. It just ain't leaked out. You know how they take time with things, friends. You know? You know how they take time. What is... Let's go and check you out again, Hank. Seeing how you're doing. You alright? I swear I wasn't checking him out in his skibbies. Anyways. Next episode, it seems like we're either going to... Connors again? I think... I has to be Connors. But what if we go... What if it's actually... Kara, and she happens to be at the Eden Club, trying to... Well, Luther said he knows someone that can help us. So, I wonder if Luther is taking us to the Eden Club and we have to... What if we're at the Eden Club the same time Connor is? Oh, no. But, I don't know about taking Alice to that. that. I'm, I'm hoping it's kind of Connor's story because it will be rough to see Kara in that situation. Going to Eden Club. But wow, what a turn of events with Marcus's story. I didn't suspect something like that. Marcus's story was kind of like we did I didn't know what what to think about. I know did I said you horror. Know the motto of Detroit is we hope for better things. I do now. I didn't know what to think about Marcus's story because you had this desperation wanting to save the child. Determination and 
Hero's story just has all the above. She has horror. She had just everything in her story. And then you had the cop partner duo stuff with Connor Hank. Marcus kind of like it had the really nice relationship with Carl. And then it kind of just went to like scary. And then now it's going back to Jericho. But it's nice to, to know where Marcus stands of what his personality kind of is. Marcus is this big leader. Leader of androids. And I just did not see that happening. And now he has this thing with his hand where it seems like he just breaks the shackles of other androids and turns them into deviants. That is so If you find the crazy. game too easy or too difficult, remember you can change the difficulty settings in the options section. It's already hard enough as it is. I can barely get, get through all these, uh, whatever they're called, quick time events. But hey, we do it. We make it happen one way or the other. But anyways, my friends, I'm out of here. Have a good one. Stay safe. See you next time. Take care.